Welcome to Sword of the Spirit, written and presented by Colin Dye, Senior Minister of Kensington Temple and leader of London City Church. Sword of the Spirit is a dynamic teaching series equipping the believers of today to build the disciples of tomorrow. We pray that you find these programs inspiring and a catalyst in deepening your knowledge of God, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hello and welcome to the Sword of the Spirit, a school of ministry in the Word and the Spirit. Our topic is Ministry in the Spirit. We're examining the Bible's teaching that you and I are called to serve God. As followers of Jesus Christ, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we're called to be like him in everything, in his morality and also in his ministry. It's not just that we are called to live righteous and holy lives, we are also called to serve others just as Jesus served others. And in this part of the teaching, we're looking at Jesus' healing ministry, how we're called to pray for people and to believe God that Jesus Christ is the same today as he was when he was on this earth. He is still the healer. We've seen how that Jesus' ministry was very important to him while he was on this earth. How that he raised up his disciples and sent his disciples out with the authority to heal the sick. As they preached the gospel, God worked with them with signs and wonders and miracles confirming his word. This is so important to realize that God still heals people today. And so in this session, we're looking at how that healing ministry operates today in our lives. We're looking at how the ministry of healing can be actually experienced by you and me in our own life of discipleship. We've seen how that when Jesus ministered healing, he asked many questions of people. He said, what's the problem? How can I help you? What do you want me to do? And at times it seems strange that Jesus would ask a blind man, what do you want me to do? But Jesus wanted them to get it straight, to understand that he was able to heal them. So he would expect the answer, Lord, I want to see. And this is not a healing technique, but it does show us how we can begin to minister today. We can ask people, how do you want me to pray? What is it that you want from God? Because in that way, faith is released and God's answers come. Hello and welcome to this teaching seminar on ministry in the Holy Spirit. We're looking at the healing ministry and today we're going to be looking at how to minister in the healing of Jesus Christ. In previous studies, we've seen that in Old Testament times, only a selected few were anointed to bring healing to people. In Jesus' time, he is the anointed healer, and he equipped a number of others also to minister with him in healing. But since his ascension, since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, as long as we're anointed, we are equipped to bring healing, the healing of Jesus Christ. This whole teaching on ministry in the Spirit is about learning how to minister with the ministry of Jesus. And therefore, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary. Even Jesus, when he stood up in the uh, synagogue in Nazareth, actually he sat down to read, uh, uh, stood up to, 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 to read and st sat down to preach and to teach. And when he said this, he said, this scripture is fulfilled today in your hearing. He was saying, the Spirit of the Lord is now upon me. And from that moment onwards, Jesus went to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse lepers, to cast out demons. And then he said, now it's your turn. His whole ministry on the earth was to equip people to be ready to minister in his name and to carry on the work that he gave them to do. And so, the great commission of Jesus, which says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, teach them everything I've commanded you, must surely be read in the context of how Jesus evangelized, how Jesus ministered the kingdom to others. And then also he says, teach them all the commandments that I have uh, given you. It must also include his commandments to go and to heal the sick. And we are equipped and empowered and commissioned as the church to heal the sick. 
Many people dis discount this and say, no, that's not possible. But it is true. As Jesus ministered, he said, I'm sending you out to do my works and greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. And therefore, every member of the body of Christ, as the body is anointed by the Holy Spirit, can minister in Jesus' healing. Now, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 6, it says, prophesy in proportion to your faith. So it suggests that gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to us and the abilities of the Spirit are related in some way to our experience and understanding. In other words, we can grow in our understanding and exercise of the gifts. This seems to be why in 1 Timothy 4 and 14, the Apostle Paul spoke to Timothy and he said, Do not neglect the gift which is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. And then in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6, it says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So Timothy, on the one hand, could neglect the gift. So Paul says, don't neglect it. And that, that, that gift could somehow die down in terms of his experience. And so Paul says, stir that gift up. Stir it up. And so this tells us a lot about the gifts that God will give to us and how he will use us. We can learn to grow in our understanding about how to prophesy and in how to hear from the Holy Spirit. We will grow in our understanding on how to heal the sick. And there are some practical pointers that I can point to to help you in this direction. And uh, before this series is out, I hope to be able to be demonstrating together with you, to be sharing in a ministry time. But in this classroom setting, don't despise the fact that I've spent two sessions teaching you from the Old Testament and the New Testament about the healing ministry. Because I'm now going to draw from those practical principles that you can apply to your healing ministry as you are anointed by the Holy Spirit. And so these are Bible-based principles to help you grow in your healing ministry. We need to, therefore, grasp very, very clearly today God's how to, how to minister healing. You know, for me, I'm not satisfied just to know that God heals the sick. You know? I'm not satisfied just to know, well, God's the healer. That's good. It's a very good start, and many people don't even end up there. But we need more. We need to know that it's God's will to heal this sick person in this situation through us here and now. There's a big difference between those things. A lot of people will say, yes, I believe God heals the sick. There was one man who I speak to. He's an antagonist of the healing ministry. He hates it and thinks we're all a bunch of fakes. I said, do you believe God's healing today? Oh, yes, I believe that. Where is he healing? Well, he doesn't answer that question. He says, not here, not with you. That's his criticism. Despite the fact of medical evidence and all the testimonies of healing. But that shows you where he's really coming from. So I put the question to him. I said, well, tell me, you don't like the way I heal the sick. You think I'm doing it wrong and I'm a big fake. So tell me about your healing ministry. He didn't say anything. You see, it's not enough to say you believe that God heals. You need to have somebody in front of you. You need to know how to put hands on them and how to say in the name of Jesus, be healed, how to test that out, and so forth. And it's easy for those who aren't doing it to criticize those who are doing it. And of course, we want to see more happening than what is happening. But something is happening very, very really and powerfully. So we've got to ask ourselves, how can we learn to minister in the Spirit to the sick? First of all, and perhaps more important than anything else, obey God's promptings. All ministry in the Spirit hinges on us recognizing the promptings or the direction of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. And so, before we can minister in the Spirit, we need to know how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. We've got to be sensitive to His voice. Uh, I stress that in knowing the Spirit in those sessions. 
I'm stressing it in this one, ministry in the Spirit. I will also stress it in a whole series on its own called Listening to God, where I go into great detail about, about this whole process of hearing from God and testing it out. But we do need to know that God can speak to us quietly over a period of time, or He can speak to us suddenly in a startling fashion. He can give us impressions in our heart, in our minds, in our spirit. He can give us mental impressions. He can give us auditory impressions. We, we hear something in our spirits. We can see something in our spirit. We can feel something in our spirit. These impressions, he can give it to us like this. He can speak to us through dramatic words of knowledge in which knowledge flashes in our minds and we know that that's from God. Sometimes Jesus and the, and the apostles must have sensed that God wanted them to minister in some particular way and obeyed that sensing. Now that kind of sensing will be either that God wants to heal somebody or, or, or a description of the person he wants to heal or a description of the condition that he wants to heal. Now, sometimes we receive um, impressions of the person in, in one way. Sometimes we might feel that in our bodies. I remember very clearly many years ago, uh, before I had knew anything about this, and I was standing on the platform in Kensington Temple as a very young probationary minister, and uh, there was a, a prayer request for somebody who, was, uh, who had a broken collarbone. And uh, as I prayed, I felt a sensation in my collarbone right here. So I put my hand there, felt a kind of tingling sensation. So I said, well, I pray that you heal this person now in the name of Jesus. One of the elders came up to, after the service and rebuked me and said, you have no right to say now in the name of Jesus. Unless the Holy Spirit shown you, and how can the Holy Spirit show you? That was his attitude. Well, it didn't matter because it was from God, and that person was healed. That, they had a testimony by the, the next week that at the time we prayed, that person was healed of their broken collarbone. I don't know the details, how they felt that, whether the pain left them or, or whatever. I don't know, but it was a powerful healing according to that person's testimony. And so you can feel it in your body. Uh, for me, uh, one of the things is that I, I can walk through the crowd of the congregation and I can discern in my body what is happening around me in other, in, with other people. I sense, and it's very important to realize this is part of the discerning period in the ministry model that we established earlier. So I also want to point out here, don't assume that if you receive a word of knowledge or some discernment about somebody's condition, that that means they are automatically healed. Because the gift of discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, and word of knowledge, these are different operations of the Spirit, the different gifts of the Spirit. They work together and should work together, but you may have a word of knowledge, but you must wait on the Lord for the gift of healing to go with that word of knowledge, otherwise all you'll have is a word of knowledge. There's somebody in this meeting with this condition, and when the meeting's over, they're going to go home with that condition as well, unless they are healed. By identifying a sickness, that doesn't mean to say the person is automatically healed. They're two different gifts of the Spirit. Have you noticed that sometimes when people call people forward with words of knowledge and, and very accurate words of knowledge and yet no healing takes place? Have you noticed that? That's because the one gift has not, been, has not flown into the next gift of the Holy Spirit. So remember that. Don't confuse the two. And if there is a word of knowledge, seek God also for his wisdom as to what to do, so there's somebody with this condition. What do you want us to do, Lord? What's happened? Well, I want to heal that person. Do you want to heal them now? Yes. Do you want to heal them through me? Yes. Do you want me to go and lay hands on them? Yes. So then you minister by the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we need to recognize then that it's God's will to heal, and we need to recognize the process by which we will hear that. It's not easy. Uh, it, it, it takes time. We must be patient. Don't expect too much of, your, of yourself. Don't make too many claims. By the way, thus says the Lord, your blind eyes are going to open. You know, really, really wait until you hear from God. Sometimes, however, it happens in such an automatic way that even you are embarrassed. I remember uh, standing in, in, in a platform and, and announcing that a girl born deaf was going to see, was going to hear, and she was going to speak. 
She was deaf and dumb from birth. I said, this girl is going to speak, is going to hear. And, um, you know, I thought to myself, my goodness me, what have I said? But it was God. God was in it because that's what happened. Very powerfully in front of, in front of that crowd. It was a very powerful moment. So then, when we are sure that we know that, that it's God's will for us to proceed under those circumstances there, we then begin to minister, to start minister healing. How do we do this? Well, obviously, we need to pray. We need to have a lifestyle of prayer. Preparatory prayer is absolutely essential for the healing ministry. And we should keep ourselves spiritually topped up and be praying constantly as part of our relationship with Jesus anyway. And so out of that relationship of prayer and intimacy with Jesus, we will find healing words coming and effective ministry flowing. In fact, all ministry in the Spirit flows out of relationship with the Spirit. Never forget that. That's so important. You need a top relationship with the Holy Spirit and to develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit in which you hear his voice, you fellowship with him, and you allow him to do everything he wants to do in you, to lead you to Jesus, to give you his blessing and to touch your life. We ought also at times need to pray. Uh, we need to pray in intercession specifically for the people who need ministry. Intercession and uh, boldness in intercession is necessary. Sometimes, uh, while we're ministering, of course, we need to be praying, but I'm talking about preparatory prayer as well. Then we need to think about partnership. The theme of partnership runs throughout the whole of the Bible. And I, I would suggest to you, normally, you should minister with spiritual partners. You should minister in teams, in groups. Two people, perhaps three or four or five or six may get too many, Crowding in around folk, it depends on the situation, depends on the circumstance. But it is always good to have a couple of people with you because, remember what I said about the word of knowledge? You may have the word of knowledge and somebody standing next to you may have the gift of healing in that situation. And somebody else may have a word of wisdom. And so as you work together, the Holy Spirit works best through the body of Christ. This doesn't mean to say that you can't minister on your own. But... It's wise to do it in partnership and so you can share with others and pray the prayer of agreement. I think uh, we need to minister with patience and uh, this is where a lot of people go wrong in the healing ministry. We start to pray for people and uh, after two minutes, nothing's happened, so we go home because there's a television program that we want to catch. Uh, if you're going to minister in Christ's compassion, you're going to have to give people time, and that requires patience. And the kind of patience I'm talking about, well, there's two kinds of patience, actually, and it's distinguished by two Greek words. There is patience towards people, macrothumia, and there's patience towards circumstances, hupomone, hupomone. Okay, now, patience towards people, long-suffering, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And this is something that flows and grows out of our general relationship with the Holy Spirit. It should be naturally developing within you. But then there's also hupomone, which is patience towards circumstances, and that's actually uh, equivalent to endurance. And that is learned. That is learned. And God can only develop hupomone in you, endurance, if he gives you something that you have to endure. So remember that. That's just for, to encourage you today. But in these things, God is giving you both patience towards people and patience towards circumstances so that you will be effective in your ministry. Okay, so patience is necessary. Perseverance is necessary as well. Not just being patient with people, but persevering. I remember, well, in fact, most people who have heard testify, God using them powerfully in healing at this particular time. It wasn't always that way. There were times when they prayed for hundreds of people and nothing happened, but they persisted. They kept on going, not just with individual cases, but in the whole ministry itself. 
because this is why people don't pray for the sick, because they prayed once and nothing happens. This is why pastors avoid this subject, because there's too many pastoral problems. Come, let's pray for the sick. Then they've got to spend six weeks teaching people why it didn't happen, telling people, explaining why it didn't happen, instead of just saying, let's have endurance. Let's keep on doing it. Our job is to pray for the sick, and his job is to heal the sick, and we'll keep on praying, and he is going to heal the sick. We need to minister with humility. People can be attracted to the healing ministry for, for the wrong reasons, but the Holy Spirit is the humble, self-effacing spirit like water. He finds the lowest place. And so as we come humbly with people, uh, before people, and humbly before God, especially when God starts to begin to use you, how dreadful it is when people get arrogant about the way God has used them, as if that was up to them. I love it the way we do it when we go on our mission teams, because nobody even remembers who prayed for whom. Often I will preach, call out some words of knowledge, and then I'll stand there on the platform and only pray for people when the Holy Spirit specifically shows me that he wants me to do that, and then I wait for the testimonies. And the teams that I take with me are standing at the front. They are praying for the sick. They're ministering. And then the people come up and give testimony. And afterwards, when we go home on the airplane or come back to London or whatever we do, we talk about it. And honestly, we can't remember who prayed for whom. As if to say, oh, remember that? Oh, yes. Who prayed for that person? Oh, I can't remember. Because we're not making notes and saying, well, I prayed and I got the healing and therefore I've got brownie points and now I can give the testimony. We need to be humble. Okay, all that's to do with preparation. Now in the ministry time itself, remember, there is a, a, a very important principle that we've seen and that is that Jesus healed people who came to him requesting healing. So you can't go to somebody and just pray for them. They're going to have to want it. And so you need to ask questions. What do you want Jesus to do for you? And sometimes this is very, very frustrating. Because unless they're ready, unless they want it, then often they don't get it. Sometimes people get it without wanting, without knowing about it. Because remember Elisha's bones... When you see something unusual, remember Elisha's bones. When that dead soldier touched the bones of the prophet, he came to life again. And God will do extraordinary things and completely cut right across everything I've just said and do what he wants to do. But normally speaking, you've got to ask questions. And uh, then that's how Jesus ministered. And in that time of questioning and asking and, and preliminary ministry, uh, you know, it's the hands-off stage that I was talking about earlier. Sometimes it's good to do this privately, intimately, not, not bellowing at folk from across the room and so forth. Don't overplay this. A climate of quiet, of privacy is, is good and important, but, you know, the Lord isn't afraid of witnesses. He wants people to see his works, but we respect the people and we also respect the leading and moving of the Holy Spirit. Jesus often took people on their own and said, now, what's going on here? What would you like me to do? And uh, even though it was obvious that they were blind or something, what would you like me to do? What do you want from me? We want to see again. Don't assume that because you think you know what's wrong with somebody that they want to be healed of that. There have been times in meetings when God is moving powerfully, healing blind eyes or deaf ears or something, and somebody's in the healing line and they've got a sore knee. What would you come forward for? Well, I want my knee healed. Oh, but did you hear that word of knowledge about blind eyes and this sister has had her eyes opened and, and you know, you, you, you want, what, what do you want God to do for you? I, I want my knee healed. What about your eyes? Oh, well, I can put up with that, but I want my knee healed. Well, you don't argue with them. It's, it's very frustrating at times. They've missed it because they weren't ready in the right mental attitude of faith and expectancy. Now, during this questioning time, don't only function at a supernatural level. Function also at the natural level of observation and deduction. Jesus did this. And he asked questions which, for which he wanted answers. He could have just said, okay, hold a moment, let me get the word. Okay, this is your name, yes, and this is your problem, and this is what you want, and you've had it for, okay, five years. He asked them, what's your name? Well, I know the particular question he did this. He was, he was speaking to the demons, but uh, it was an important part of the ministry. 
What do you want me to do? What do you want from God? This helps the person to be clear in their minds about what they're seeking. Here's a very important question. Do you really want to be well? Do you want to be well? Jesus asked that of the man who had been uh, sick for 38 years, the impotent man, paralyzed man by the pool of Bethesda. Do you remember that? He said, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? Why did he ask that question? Because there's a mindset that comes with sickness. For 38 years, the man had reconciled himself to having that disease. Don't underestimate this. Because sometimes being healed is very inconvenient. It creates problems. I remember a woman who was healed out of a wheelchair in one of the meetings at which I was preaching. And uh, I had a word of knowledge. She, the, the arthritis began uh, when she was working as a, an industrial nurse. And she had a, a nursing accident. What, what it was, whether she dropped somebody or twisted her arm or something. And that sparked off arthritis, which went throughout her whole body. She was in a wheelchair. She could walk minimal, you know, painfully, just a little bit. And uh, she spent most of her day on, on the couch downstairs. And, and she was ready to be healed. She was out of that wheelchair in a lot of pain, and God healed her, and she's still well today. A wonderful, wonderful, dramatic healing. Tremendous healing. But that was the beginning of her difficulties. And what happened was this. The whole family couldn't adjust. This woman had been ill and an invalid for so long, the whole family pattern was built around Mama lying down there. And the children were frightened to go to school. They were terrified that when they came back, their mum wouldn't be there. Because she was now going to the shops, she was now jogging, she was living a normal life. And the, and the, the family needed counselling. No, it's serious, it's serious. The whole family needed counselling to, to try and help them to change their mindset. The children were in a dreadful state. So think about it. Think about it. Think about somebody who's never seen before and suddenly sees. How does that person feel? And that brings today's teaching on ministry in the Spirit to a close. I pray that over these programs, God has begun to show you what it means to minister for Him, to be a true servant of Jesus Christ, and to do so in the power and ministry of the Holy Spirit. Till next time, God bless you.